Good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, this is Michael Swack uh, at the Carsey School at the University of New Hampshire, and I'm the academic coordinator of our master's program in community development. And welcome to our webinar today. Glad you could join us. Uh, webinar will last about 20 minutes, and I'll go through a, a, a presentation here de describing the program and some of the requirements and try and answer questions uh, about uh, the structure of the program and financial aid. But also, if you have any questions, uh, please type your questions into the, uh, into the box, uh, the discussion box, and uh, I'll see those questions and I'll answer any questions that you have as well. And uh, at the end, the last slide will have contact information so that if you would like to contact uh, me or any of my colleagues by either email or phone, we have that information posted as well. So a little bit about the Carsey School to begin with, and then I'll get into our community development program. Uh, the Carsey School of, of Public Policy has a range of uh, academic programs, research programs, engagement and, and, and outreach programs uh, that cover the spectrum of public policy issues. Our faculty is really a great combination of, of people with extensive field experience as well as teaching and academic experience. And the education philosophy we have for the community development program really emphasizes uh, hands-on learning. We have the, the, as you'll see, the project-based approach and a very dynamic cohort uh, group of, of student uh, learners who are, have experienced themselves and the curriculum is designed to take advantage of the experience that uh, you bring as practitioners as well. Uh, Carsey has a set of graduate degrees, the Master's in Community Development, uh, which uh, you are interested in. And that's a program that, that's really designed for people coming from all over the place. Our students come from all over the United States and all over the world uh, because the residency requirement is really relatively short. It's uh, three weeks on campus, uh, your first term in the summer, and then the program goes online uh, in the uh, fall and spring terms. Uh, where you carry out a project often associated with your community or even your organization. We'll get to that more in a moment. And then you come back for the final and fourth term uh, on campus again for three weeks. We also have uh, programs for residential students, the master's in public administration. Courses are offered in person on campus in Manchester and in Durham. And our master's in public policy, a, a program that's a, a residential program uh, again, uh, uh, for uh, students entering public policy professions. A little bit more about our Masters in, in Community Development. Uh, again, uh, we have a wide range of, of students with, uh, in terms of where they're from, the experience they bring, uh, but the emphasis really is on inter an interdisciplinary curriculum. So there are courses in finance, there are courses in management, there are course, elective courses in community health and housing and finance. And uh, the idea is for you to apply the work as well. So one of the benefits if you have an employer is that essentially they're getting a benefit while you're in school uh, through what you're learning, but also through the project that you may be carrying out in the community. So you'll be applying your learning uh, immediately. The program itself is a 39 credit program. There are 11 core required courses. And then you take uh, three elective courses are part of the requirements. You can take additional elective courses, uh, courses that are offered either online uh, or in a hybrid format, meaning they start in uh, the three weeks you have on campus and you complete them uh, throughout the summer when you return back to your home community. As I mentioned earlier, the, uh, there is a career focus uh, often employers uh, support people on the job, both financially and or giving them uh, time off. And there's a close connection with your faculty advisors and, and the, the faculty of the project course who are providing oversight and assistance on the project that you're implementing in your community. And finally, we have post-graduation career support. We find that many people who go through the program are looking to move into community development or looking to move beyond their current position into new positions, and we provide assistance with that as well. 
Again, it's uh, designed for working professionals, the brief summer terms on campus. Uh, you can, however, spread the program out. Uh, many people choose to complete in 14 months, in which case you take your summer courses, the hybrid courses that are part in person and part online, and then take online courses in the fall and spring. At that point, you have a choice. You can take just one course if you want, which would be the project course, if you feel that that's the most you can take on while you're uh, doing your work, or you can take two courses online uh, at the same time uh, for both the fall and spring terms. If that's the case and you attend both summers and take uh, the minimum, uh, take the two courses in the spring and fall, you complete in 14 months. You can also spread it out if you want to take just one course when you're back uh, and spread it out to 18 or even 24 months if, that what's, if that's what work best, works best for you. As I mentioned, we do emphasize uh, learning from each other. Uh, there are small cohort sizes. If you enter the program in the summer, which most people do, typically the cohort is about 15 to 20 people. And the curriculum is also designed so that people who are also working in the field have an opportunity to talk about, present their work, and certainly incorporate their work and their perspectives into the courses that we offer. Uh, and again, we have people with vast experience uh, from all over the United States and overseas. Uh, roughly 60% of the en enrollment in a given cohort is, is domestic, and about 40% is from overseas, primarily developing countries. A little bit about the curriculum. I have a list here of the, the core courses uh, that you would take. And, uh, and the core courses... Uh, you see that uh, we start with the Integrative Approaches to Development. That's a, the introductory course that I co-teach that really uh, leads to the others, uh, talks about uh, approaches to development, models of development, theories of change, what sort of development projects and programs work effectively, and then also leads into the variety of courses we have on uh, required courses on policy analysis, economic development, environmental issues, strong core courses in both organizational management and, and financial management. And then the project itself, which is a, a four course sequence, starting with project design, implementation, management, and the final course in monitoring and evaluation. I'm gonna stop for uh, just a minute here. I have a couple of questions come in. Uh, one question I have about the project is, do you have to have a project before you start the program? Uh, the answer is no, and, and most people don't. Uh, most people take that first term and take advantage of the course in project design to think about what is a doable project, uh, what makes sense, how would it be structured, do they want to use uh, their workplace, or do they want to do a project elsewhere. Uh, many use a project as a springboard into the kind of work they want to be doing when they finish the program. So there's no requirement that you know beforehand most people uh, think it through while they're taking the project design course and will make a decision about a project by the end of the summer. Uh, moving on then, the electives. There are a range of electives. We've just listed a few of them here. Uh, everything from community medicine, sustainable agriculture. Uh, there are also uh, elective courses in uh, uh, community development finance and negotiations and housing. So a range of elective courses of which you need to choose three. As I mentioned before, uh, this is again getting back to the structure of the program, that you can take it in as little as 14 months or you can spread it out to uh, 24 months depending on really how many courses you are able to take when you're back at your workplace in the spring and fall terms. Uh, so the cost as well as the same. So whether you do it in 14 months or 24 months, you don't pay more for the 24 months, just the cost is spread out over that period of time. Uh, a little bit, oh wait, uh, another question came in. Let me uh, try and get to that. The uh, question is, uh, what kinds of jobs can I expect to apply for after I complete the program? Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, what some of the people are, are doing now, but uh, 
really a pretty wide range. Uh, people are involved in nonprofit or non-governmental organizations uh, dealing with community development, uh, community health, microenterprise, affordable housing. Uh, many people end up working in, and or start working in, in government agencies of, of all kinds, local, state, and national. We also have people who work in uh, the private sector. We have people who have worked in banking and finance, usually on the community development finance side, but really a range of different uh, opportunities for people who, uh, when they graduate the program or, or finish the program. Uh, cost and affordability, you see it here on the slide. Uh, the tuition is uh, $27,330 for New Hampshire residents, $30,000 for uh, out of state. Uh, accommodations are approximately $1,250 per summer. Uh, we do offer uh, financial aid directly through uh, the program here at CARSI. Uh, typically, those are uh, scholarship grants of between uh, uh, $2,000 and $6,000, uh, depending on need. Uh, in addition, we help in terms of accessing uh, federal loan programs and also trying to connect people to other scholarship resources that may exist in their community. You'll see a list of financial aid scholarships and fellowships uh, that are possible. Uh, if you're with a neighbor works organization, if you've been in the Peace Corps, also, as I said, CARSI, schools need based scholarships. Everyone is eligible for those. And many of our students are able to access outside grants and scholarships, often from local community foundations that support uh, education and this type of work. Again, career and, and job placement. Uh, you see again the list of the types of organizations. I just uh, answered that, that question that, uh, that people are uh, working in, uh, non-governmental, non-profit, government agencies, uh, private organizations, consulting firms. So a, a pretty wide range uh, of, of organizations that uh, people are involved in. A uh, couple other questions have come through. Let me go to those for just a minute. Um, question is, I'm worried about being able to take three weeks off from work. Do you have any suggestions? Um, really, what we've seen is uh, students have found that when they share with their organization the benefit the organization will get right away uh, from the work that they're doing, uh, most organizations have been supportive. Yeah, it's, it's squeezing things and, and it's a lot of work during that time. But uh, again, uh, when people talk to their organizations and the, the people they work with, the, the capstone project is, is often of direct benefit. Often coursework assignments, for example, in, in some of the financial analysis, you're asked to look at your, your own organization's financial statements and, and are able to make contributions right away in terms of understanding and, and recommendations. Uh, and most students use uh, vacation and flex time that they need to. You can also stay connected. There are two hour lunchtime breaks during the classes. Uh, people stay connected to their jobs if they need to in order to satisfy their organization's requirements. So a combination of flex time, vacation time, staying in touch while you're here. These are the ways students generally find to manage uh, uh, the uh, taking the program and keeping their jobs at the same time. Uh, last, uh, the, in terms of careers, and another question on that, and let me just give you uh, uh, some examples of where recent graduates are, are working now. Uh, we have a recent graduate who actually founded her own uh, social entrepreneurship center in, in Canada, as that was actually her project in the program. We have another person who's the uh, Vice President of Community Investments for uh, a local community foundation. We have another who's the Regional Refugee Coordinator for the state of Kansas. We have uh, a graduate who's the President of a Community Development Corporation in California. We have another who works on savings groups in uh, Guatemala. So you can see a pretty wide range of, of people involved in uh, 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 various jobs and, and various types of institutions uh, uh, throughout the United States and, and beyond. Uh, let me just stop here again and see if there are any additional questions. Um, 
If you have additional questions beyond the ones that were raised now, please feel free to contact any of us. You see on the screen here, uh, my email address, uh, and also Sanjeev and Robin, colleagues of mine who work in the program, and uh, also the phone numbers. These are our direct phone numbers. Feel free to contest, contact us by email or phone uh, for any other questions. Uh, again, we hope to see you as part of this cohort. I should mention the application deadline for this particular summer, for this summer is uh, March 15th, so about another uh, seven weeks or so before the application deadline. And again, feel free to contact us with qu any questions you have ranging from program, curriculum, to financial aid. Okay, I see there are no additional questions at this time. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, appreciate your taking the time, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you.